Okay, so just this one is for all. Okay, so we just made it to Boston. I am here for the next four days with my mom and my aunt. Um, we just uh, checked in our bags at our hostel and we're on our way to grab some breakfast and then afterwards we'll start exploring Boston. So we're stopping by and getting a quick uh, breakfast here at Mike and Patty's. They just do uh, breakfast sandwiches. Right now we're walking through Boston's Commons to get to our first stop. So we're going to be doing a little DIY cemetery tour. Um, first one coming up is the Granary, which I believe is the more popular of the three cemeteries we'll be seeing. And this is our first stop, the Granary Cemetery, or I think they, call, they refer to them as burial grounds here. So do you guys know the difference between a cemetery and a burial ground? So the difference these cemeteries do, where you know where somebody's at because you have a designated plot. Burial grounds is a massive grave. I have some facts on it right now. I'm going to put my camera away. I'll, I'll read it. So is this a cemetery? Or no, it's a burial ground. I'll tell you guys right now. Let me just watch, record the entrance. So this burial ground hill has an estimated 2,500 headstones, but it is said that over 5,000 Bostonians were buried here. So our first um, headstone that we are stopping and looking at are from the five victims of the uh, Boston Massacre and then, and then Sam Adams' headstone. All right. And that one in front of us is the tombstone for the parents of Benjamin Franklin. They have Paul Revere's uh, tombstone right here. That's why everybody's standing here and there's a big tour group. And there's a little bit of fall foliage starting. And this is going to be the last one that I have information on. So John Hancock and of course uh, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. So Patty found this. It says friend look up and see the North Church Tower where so this is telling us that the North Church directly behind us where the uh, lanterns were lit in by Paul Revere. We're coming into the Omni Parker Hotel because it is home of where the Boston cream pie was discovered. So we're just going to grab one to share one. All right, so we're heading to the gift shop. You don't actually have to go and wait for a table at the restaurant. So the Boston cream pie was created in 1856 and this used to be called the Parker House Hotel and now it is called the Omni Park Hotel. Share one Boston cream pie. Thank you for the presentation. All right, heading out and continuing on our cemetery tour. The next one is King's Chapel. Our next stop, the King's Chapel, and then they have a burial ground as well. Okay, uh, let's go this way. We'll w walk and talk. Okay, so the King's Chapel Burial Ground, founded in, eight, in 1630 at the time of the settlement of Boston. King's Chapel is Boston's proper oldest burying place. The earliest graves and tombs were scattered randomly throughout the grounds with no formal pathways. Notable buried, notable buries here include 
Massachusetts first governor John Winthrop, William Dawes, Paul Revere's companion on his ride to Lexington in 1775, the Revere John Cotton, a powerful religious leader in the 17th century, um, Isaac Usher, the colony's first printer and publisher, and May Shilton, who may be who many believe was the first woman to step on the main Mayflower. All right, we're getting ready to head to our third uh, burial ground. The I believe it's called Coops um, Cemetery. It's in the north end, so we're heading on the T to get to the north end. The walk through the uh, Holocaust Memorial, which is these uh, glass structures in front of me. Ready? Oh no, it's the numbers that were tattooed on the prisoners. That's what all these. The Union Oyster House is the oldest restaurant in the United States. We're heading to the uh, North End. Alright, so our second stop of our DIY food tour is this uh, past bakery shop, pastry shop. And let's see if they didn't already sell out of the uh, pastry that I want to get. This one. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, which ones are, how do you say this? Can we um, get two? Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. That's our pastry. All right, so we have Paul Revere's statue here, and right behind Paul Revere's statue is the Old North Church. We do have a crypt tour there at one o'clock. It's barely eleven, so we're gonna head over to the uh, Coops um, burial ground first. All right, before we go into our final and last um, burial ground, there's a skinny house here on Google Maps. So why not check it out? And the skinny house before we go into the uh, Coops burial ground, which is just right behind us. I kept I kept calling it Coops, so it's Cops Hill. It's Cops. Couldn't remember if it been two. I couldn't remember if there was two O's or two P's. So you guys ready to hear about this one? So Copps Hill was Boston's largest colonial burial ground dating from 1659. Copps Hill's burial ground is the largest of the colonial cemeteries. It was used through the 1850s and holds and remains over 10,000 people, including more than 1,000 free blacks, free black slaves. Today, more than 1,200 graves are marked. They just pile them on top have a little less than an hour before our crypt tour so we just came down to the Charles River and just sitting down for a minute and taking in the quiet all right done with our little break and we are heading back to the Old North Church we're still a little early so find some more shade and sit down we've already done uh, 12,000 steps our flight landed at 645 and then I think we got to our hotel at 8.22 and then from there we've just been walking. Alright, we are starting our crib tour. Alright folks, try to push in just a little bit. Want to make sure everybody can actually hear me. Just want to make sure I can close the door behind us as we begin.
And just like before, all the foot. Oh, did I mention that I was in Boston before three years ago? But anyways, all those footsteps that you hear are from the church upstairs. I'm not supposed to record, but. All right, so we just finished with the Old North Church and we're gonna go grab something to eat and then hopefully it'll be three o'clock and we can go finally check in. So for lunch, we are eating at Dino's. Dishes, we have a Greek salad, egg pack parmesan, and our third dish is the lobster ravioli, which should probably be coming out shortly. And our final plate, the uh, lobster ravioli. Mm -hmm. All right, finished up our meal that was delicious and Heading back to the uh, hostel and finally checking in. This time we are going to take the tea. I know earlier I mentioned we were going to take it, but um, we ended up just walking to the north and it wasn't too far. But now we are tired from walking all day, so we are taking the subway. North station in front of us and we're catching the orange line. Oh, you guys are going to need your um, our Charlie cards. Mm -hmm. There's a train right there, you guys, if you hurry up. Are you coming? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, I'm out. Spread your legs. This is the hostel we're staying at this time. It's the found. We got checked in and we have a, so again the tip, this was a hostel. This is a private room, we have our own private restroom, first queen bed, and the second queen bed, actually each one has its own TV and a little desk area. Okay, so after a couple hours of resting at the hostel and kind of getting a little cleaned up, we're back out again. We are heading over to Acorn Street and Lewis, uh, I think it's Lewisburg Square. Uh, I believe it's a bunch of historical homes and some of some cobble streets. And from what I've seen on Google, uh, they decorate pretty nicely for Halloween. So we're gonna go check that out. Hopefully we see some cool Halloween decorations. Make a right. Right here. Mm -hmm. Chestnut. So this is the uh, Acorn Street. Obviously it's a old cobblestone. Okay, so we've made it to Lewisburg Square. Let's go walk on the sidewalk. And unfortunately, none of them actually have any Halloween decorations up. Maybe it's a little too early. But it's still nice to see. <laughs> so those are the two stops that I have found, which was the uh, Acorn Street and the uh, Lewis. Lewisburg Square. We found this little empty alleyway that says, hey, let's just walk down this dark, creepy alley alleyway. <laughs> That's a real person. We're out of the alleyway and walking back on the main street. That's going to be pretty much it for tonight. I think we're just going to head back to our hostel, rest up, and get ready for tomorrow. 
All right, it's day two here in Boston for us. We're going to grab breakfast at Dunkin' and today we're doing the uh, hop on hop hop tr trolley and exploring the Freedom Trail. All right, we're jumping on the uh, trolley. Hopefully we can get on this one. And I'm just saying you're aware of what will be going on. Hey guys, come on up. Yes. So we just got off on our first stop. We're heading over to Paul Revere's house now. So we're gonna make a quick little stop at Boba's Bakery to get some cannolis before we head over to Paul Revere's house. So there's Paul Revere's house right there across the street. We're, we're gonna sit over here and eat our cannolis before we go inside. Okay, so we have three cannolis. We have, we have pistachio, creme brulee, and pumpkin. There's no recording allowed inside, so we're just getting a shot of the house from the outside. get on the uh, USS Con Constitution, but we do have to go through security before boarding the ship. Short ceilings. Five even. Clear it, no problem. So I guess the uh, sleeping quarters for the sailors. Ooh, a lot of hammocks. Okay, so that's it for the USS Constitution. We're gonna go back to the trolley stop and con continue on the trolley tour. So after the USS Constitution, we got back on the trolley and we got off on stop number four to eat at Regina's Pizza. And as you can see, there is a line. So we've made it to stop five on our trolley tour. It's the uh, old state house directly in front of us. But we're going to eat our Regina's pizza across the street and then go inside. Let's go to the front of it first and then we'll come to come in. So that right there signifies the site of the Boston Massacre and the uh, balcony on which the Declaration of Independence was read. Um, spiral stairs inside the old state house. Outside the window is the uh, balcony that we stood outside and looked up at. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the old state house, and we are now moving on to the old south meeting house. So, from the old state house, we made it to the old south meeting house. We bought a combo ticket, which will allow, to, allow us to visit this site as well.
and we're going to stop at Luke's Lobster be before heading back to the uh, trolley. Lobster Trio, we have a spicy honey, a truffle butter, and lemon butter. So we just got off on stop number seven, but it's going to be the last stop for us on the tour, and it's the Cheers Bar. Yeah. Yeah. Ordered a hard cider and Patty got a Long Island. Oh, did you want a soda or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, leaving Cheers now and heading across the street to the Boston Public Garden. And the scene from Goodwill Hunting where Robin Williams is sitting down on a park bench talking to Matt Damien was filmed here, so we'll be walking to that bench in a minute. bench right here to my right where the gentleman sitting is the bench that Matt Damon and Robin Williams are sitting on so let's see it's the sculpture has been placed here as a tribute to Robert McCloskey whose story make way for the ducklings has made the Boston Public Garden familiar to children th throughout the world 1987 so we left the uh, Boston Public Gardens we're cutting through the Boston Commons to take the uh, subway to Union Oyster House where we'll be having our dinner for tonight. We're still in Boston Commons and we've been hopping off, we've been hopping all around the uh, Freedom Trail. We didn't actually start it from the beginning, but the Freedom Trail does start from the Visitor Center. So we're actually gonna do our official start, even though we kind of already completed it. So us officially starting the Freedom Trail from the Visitor Center. And there's our subway that we're catching back to the North End to have dinner at the Union Oyster House. Okay, so that subway entrance was actually the wrong entrance. Found the uh, correct one. The other one was going the opposite direction of what we needed to go. Oh, yeah, see if you pay attention. Government Center North. Third time's a charm. Okay. Got the right one. Government Center. Just sit wherever. Alright, finally made it back into the North End. <laughs> kind of hilarious we finally made it to the Union Oyster House <laughs> I did such a bad job of navigating this time uh, how long is the wait for a party three an hour and 30 minutes an hour and 30 minutes Thank you. Unless you so we're actually sitting at the bar instead of waiting an hour and a half but now we get to see them check the oysters Depending on how hungry you are. Okay. Alright, so we're all supposed to get clam chowder. My mom and Patty got clam chowder, but I went ahead and did the oysters. It's been a minute since I've had them, so. Finished up at the oyster house a few minutes ago, and we're looking for a souvenir shop before we head back to our hotel or a hostel. Best of Boston. Okay, we're done souvenir shopping and we're back at the state house we're actually taking the subway that's located underneath the old state house to head home forest hills in two minutes okay we're heading back to the hostel and that's pretty much it for tonight tomorrow we head to salem so we'll pick this up again tomorrow okay woke up to a gloomy day we are supposed to get rain later on um, but we are, are heading to Salem today. Right now we're on our way to the subway to catch the Orange Line to the North Station we'll, where we will purchase our tickets to the new um, to Salem on the Newberry Rail. All right, we made it to the North Station. Then across the street. 
So we are taking 835 Newburyport via Salem. Train 45, but track has not been announced, so we'll just wait. It's currently it's currently 816, so we have time. Alright, track two, Newberry train to Salem. So we arrived in Salem, we're going to stop to eat at the uh, Ugly, Mug, Ugly Mug Diner and then I'm going to try to get my tickets, uh, get our tickets for the Salem Witch House and head over there after breakfast. And the Bee Witch statue. Alright, actually I almost passed it up, didn't even see a sign for it. How many? 40. 40? No, no thank you. Oh. Never mind for the Ugly... Mug Diner is a 40 minute wait. So we're eating at the Fountain Place. As we were walking here, I was trying to purchase our tickets for the uh, Salem Witch House. And unfortunately, I lucked out. They were all sold out by 9.30. So we are still going to walk um, by the house after breakfast. But I did get tickets for the House of Gables. So we'll be going there in the later afternoon. Um, but for now, we're going to go eat breakfast. All right, so our breakfast, I have a side order of corned beef and hash. Got scrambled eggs and home fries. And egg sausage and home fries. Okay, we're now walking over to the Salem Witch House. Okay, so from the Witch House, we're continuing down now to the Ropes Mansion. That one is closed today, so we're not gonna be able to go inside. Okay, so even though the Ropes Mansion um, is closed today, the gardens are always open and free to explore. So this is Proctor's Ledge. This is the actual execution site of the 12 victims from the Salem Witch Trials. These 12 names are the same 12 names you'll find at the Salem Witch Trial Memorial. Um, it wasn't until 2016 that this site was discovered as the execution site of the 12 victims. No, this is where they were hung, their execution. But I don't know what they found. Doctor's Ledge was discovered to be the execution site of the 19 innocent victims hung during the Salem Witch Trials. Eyewitness accounts from the years 1692, trail papers, and geo-archaeological remote sensings were used to confirm the sites of the hanging. Okay, we're back in the downtown area of Salem and we're walking towards now the Salem Witch Trial Memorial. So my information at Proctor's Ledge was incorrect. Proctor's Ledge had 19 names, I had said 12. So it's the 19 victims that were hung. The Salem Witch Trial Memorial, which we're at right now, has 20, 20 victims' names, 19 that were hung and one that was pressed. That's why Proctor's Ledge only has 19 victims because that's where they believe they were hung. Therefore, the one that was pressed is not memorialized there. Now we're heading over to the town hall, which was used in the movie Hocus Pocus, just to get some shots. Okay, so we're gonna be heading out of downtown Salem again. We're gonna head towards the Salem Pioneer Village. It will be closed, but I did read some reviews, um, people saying that you can still get good shots of the village from the fence line. And then from there, we're gonna walk over to Max's house. Right now, we're just waiting for our, our Salem skipper, which is like the Uber here. I'm running over here, because our skipper should be showing up shortly. A little 9-11 memorial, a piece of the Twin Towers. All right, let's hurry, scurry back. All right, again, like I mentioned, we know it's closed, so we're just gonna peek through the fence. Oh, look, they even put a haystack there so you can stand and look over. See? See, they know what people are doing. Look 
so from the Salem Pioneer Village, we are now walking to the house where Max lived in Hocus Pocus. All right, just hopped off our Salem skipper and we're at the Marine Time Museum. Normally you could board this replica ship, but looks like it might be being restored. Did a little souvenir shopping at the chocolate pantry. Bought some decorated sugar cookies. That's one. There's two of those that I bought. And then also, and then as well as some, these are Oreos, spider webs. And this chocolate pecan turtle. And this crazy decorated corridor between two houses. It's almost time for the uh, tour at the House of Seven Gables, so we're walking that way. Made it to the House of Seven Gables and it's starting to rain. Okay, we do have 15 minutes before our tour, but we are free to roam the grounds. The rain did come down a few minutes ago, but it has stopped and I know it's supposed to pick up again at three, but we'll be inside our tour and then hopefully by the time our tour is done, it will stop raining. Okay, so that was it for our tour of the House of Seven Gables. As well as our time here in Salem, we're going to catch another Salem skipper and head back to the train to head back to, into Boston. Alright, so we're going to eat at this dumpling place. All right, so me and Patty both got udon noodles. I ordered some dumplings and my mom got a noodle soup. So we just made it back to our hotel. It's pretty much gonna be it for tonight. Tomorrow is our last day, but we will be doing some exploring before we head to the airport. So we'll pick this up again tomorrow. All right, starting off our last day here. We're gonna go grab some breakfast. And then afterwards, we are going to the Boston Tea Party ship. Okay, so we got finished with breakfast a little early, so before we do the Boston Tea Party, we took the uh, Green Line train and we're heading to Finway. We're just going to get some shots of the park from the outside. Okay, got my shot of Finway Park. Now we're hopping back on the uh, subway um, and heading to the Boston Tea Party ship. And we made it to our last stop for today, the Boston Tea Party ship. So the next available tour isn't actually till 12.15 and we're trying to be back at our hostel to grab our bags by one to head to the airport. So it's gonna be cutting it closer. We're not actually gonna do it. We're just gonna look at it from the outside and take some shots. And I'm gonna grab some banh mi's. We have our sandwiches, um, we're just gonna lead them back out of our hostel and then pick up our bags and then from there jump on the Silver Line to head back to Boston Logan Airport. So we've made it to Boston Logan Airport and so that's gonna be it for this trip until the next one.